I was in front of my telly watching Manchester United being taken apart yep. by Newcastle United. So holders put out by the finalists of the Carabao Cup in February. Newcastle were brilliant. Simon, they're fans. I know I go on about them, but I think they are so special, those Newcastle United fans. Yeah. Travelling in massive numbers, about 8,000 of them made the trip to Old Trafford. Some of them bare-chested. That's another matter. But they are characters. They are the, the, the 12th man whenever Eddie and the boys need them. And they're there for them. But the story, of course is Manchester United. Are things beginning to move into the desperate territory now for Ten Hag? I mean, are the players, I said in the introduction, are the players about to win again, Simon, and dumping another manager? Um, I don't know if the players are about to win or if indeed the players are trying to win either on the field or off the field. I would suspect that as professional footballers, they're, they're attempting to win games. He's not got their attention and he needs to get it. Yeah. And that's the focus of a manager. I was listening to Alan Pardew talking to Alan Brazil this morning about the, the idea of going to the players and asking the players if indeed they're with them, which I find a perplexing way of approaching things because ultimately if you ask the players that they're with, they're with you, they're hardly going to say that they're not. Their actions will tell you much louder than their words. Look, sometimes... It's always darkest before the dawn. Sometimes you, you don't bounce until you hit the bottom. And maybe it needs to get to this point, not necessarily for Ten Hag to get his walking papers, but for people's minds to be concentrated because they are all over the place at the moment. I mean, even when they're winning, they're finding a way to win that doesn't bring much credit upon themselves. Let's have it right. They beat Copenhagen last week. Yeah. But the story was the goalkeeper saves a last-minute penalty. Yes. You yeah. know, and, yeah. and, and Harry Maguire gets them out of jail in terms of scoring a goal. And, of course, people build that as a redemp redemption campaign. I mean, I've, quite frankly, Harry Maguire's job is to be a good defender, not to pop up and score goals. That's an added bonus. But look, they're in a very poor vein of, vein of form at this moment in time, and they need to snap out of it. Nothing goes on forever, good and bad. And if he continues to lose games the way that he is losing games, mm. then, of course, he's going to lose his job. Well, I mean, he says, for one, don't worry about me, I am a fighter. This was Ten Hag. I, I'm a fighter, and um, I know it's not always going uh, going up. We have a lot of setback, setbacks this season so far, but also there you have to deal with it, and there is never an excuse, and I have said it before. And I know when there are setbacks, then the routines in the way of play are not, uh, are not similar, are not the same, but even then you have to get the results in. Obviously, Sunday tonight wasn't far from that. So we have to do things uh, right and at a certain level, at a minimum level, to win games. Here's the thing, Simon. Yeah. And, and, and I, there's nobody better than you to ask him this because you've employed managers. You knew what you wanted every time you employed one. Serial winners like Mourinho, club legends yeah. like Solskjaer, disciplinarians, um, Van Gaal maybe, yeah. have all come and gone and they failed. What kind of manager is going to buck the trend and succeed at Old Trafford. But you also have to look at these, each one of these individuals in the rounds, right, in isolation, and work out what was going on at Manchester United at the time to determine why these situations and these choices were made. Because when you read off that list of well-heeled managers, you know, you say to yourself, well, how can it not have been something that... They all, how can all of these guys have suffered it? Yeah. But then you look at Mourinho and you say to yourself, Mourinho wasn't the Mourinho that we knew before. Mourinho had personal issues. You know, his, I think his father wasn't very well. Also, at the same time, he wasn't committing himself. He was staying in a hotel in Manchester and the Lowry and commuting back and forth from London. So he wasn't exhibiting the same sort of traits that you think he wanted to do. Van Hal didn't gel with the media. And all of a sudden, a guy that wins an FA Cup is walking out the door holding the <laughs> FA Cup while getting sacked as he walks yes, out the door. Exactly. Moyes was given no chance because Moyes comes out of Everton. You know, everybody knew that the chalice that was going to follow, the poison chalice that potentially follows the Alex Ferguson re re regime was going to follow. And of course, then you've got United players. The rumour goes around that, you know, Moyes is trying to employ a certain set of standards and he's being told by senior figures at the, on playing staff, right. you know, that's maybe the way you do at Everton, but it's not the way you do it here. So yeah. there's a culture battle. Yeah. Then you look at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and you say to yourself, well, okay, nobody can price that one in. Sorry, I know people think that I'm, I'm singling out this fella, but this is the world's biggest football club, or close to it. You don't employ peripheral figures that ultimately make you feel good in the dressing room for five minutes and win a couple of games when you're the world's biggest football club trying to achieve things. Right. And here you land on Ten, ten Hag. And Ten Hag comes in with, with, with challenges. You've got Ibrahimovic talking about 
the big name players that he will not have managed in terms of his experience and the culture of a football club like Ajax that comes with huge focus but not the focus and expectation and the erosion and the constant attention that Manchester United have and all of those things. Now, his disciplinary pro approach, you've now got a narrative being peddled out that he hasn't treated Harry Maguire very well. Well, you know, this is a man trying to lead by definite decision-making <laughs> process. He doesn't think Maguire has been, very, yeah. has been good enough, so he drops him and all of a sudden, certain sections of the media are peddling out that Maguire is not being treated. And it's an example of how Ten Hag doesn't have the jurisdiction well, he had the jurisdiction. He had the balls to drop the club captain because he didn't think he was good enough. Now, the tragedy for that is, is the results haven't followed. Yeah. And so the people that he's put in his place, that he's signed, he cannot have fallen out with the players that he's signed. He cannot have brought players in specifically for him that he wants to play in a certain way that he's had a relationship with previously that are falling out with him. There's still a bedrock of players in that football club, with due respect to the anti-marshals of, of the world, that have let down other managers. Of course. Yes. And that's yes. the cult. You've got to get yeah. them all out. And yeah. you've got to rebuild from a premise of everybody buying into the manager. Now, of course you've got to get results at the same time. So he's in this situation where... He can't he can't buy a pound for a fiver right now because whatever he does he gets it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't and he doesn't like you know I made the observation a year ago and I'm going to stand by it about the big man a small man in a big suit because it wasn't designed to be about what he's wearing it's designed to be about the presence and the look and feel and substance of this yeah. man. Yeah. And I don't th think and people are coming around to this school of thought and now people are coming around to it more frequently because it's easy to see once the vision's arrived that maybe this guy doesn't have the chops. You you think the foundations are are, are there though? Do you you, th you well, the still found, think the foundations in ten high? The this, well, I think they're going to say they're roundly beaten on Saturday lunchtime by Fulham. Well, say they're roundly beaten uh, unless you understand the workings of the minds of Manchester United's board, and I don't think they understand it sometimes. You know, Richard Arnold doesn't seem to understand certain things, and the Glazers don't really care that much. And I'm not suggesting that's a good or a bad thing. That's because they devolve authority on a daily basis to it's Richard a Arnold. Dreadful thing. Well. I, I, if that's okay. the case, well, that's, well let me ask horrendous. you a question. I would imagine that Sheikh Mansour doesn't wake up in the morning thinking about Man City and going to bed at night thinking about Man City. He's devolved. Yeah, but he's that, put the right structure in well, place to make point. sure they succeed. He's devolved the authority to those. The that, haven't. He's devolved the authority yeah. to those that make the right decisions. Yeah. Right. And you can't argue that Woodward made the right decisions commercially, but as far as the football infrastructure, clearly it's not good enough. Well, Sam, many people think Ten Hag's done. Many people think he's all but done. If he is. What model of manager is going to succeed here at this club that we seem to be talking about on a daily basis? Well, timing is, is it's again, it's timing is everything. You know, you get managers at the right time. Tottenham Hotspur, you would have thought on paper got the right manager and Antonio Conte. They didn't. They got the right manager at the wrong time. They needed somebody with a culture to change the culture, but he wasn't inclusive. Now, all of a sudden, out of the ether comes an Australian that's had, that's, you know, cut his teeth in Scottish football, comes into English football, wants to manage Tottenham Hotspur, and all of a sudden, Tottenham Hotspur sit on top of the league. Now, I don't suggest they're going to stay there, but even people like Arsene Wenger are saying, price these guys in the conversation. Yeah. So I think it's a lot to do with the timing of the manager that you get, where they are in their career, yeah. what their career path is. You look at people like Ancelotti coming into Everton. I always thought that that was a marriage made in hell because I thought he was doing Everton a favour. But someone like Ancelotti, I'm not suggesting Ancelotti because he's at Real Madrid, but he's the kind of cachet kudos and currency and potential uh, ideology that would suit a Manchester United of the, of the world because he's not your typical dictatorial Italian. He's quite a pragmatic one that has a, a, a certain relationship with players which is different. But Ten Hag is still in situ, and I don't like writing managers off and starting the no, sack, I know sack that. race. To be fair, I know that. But if he keeps on losing yeah. losing games the way he is, then it will be taken out of his hands. Yeah, um, OK. Um, I'm going to put it out there. I mean, there's a great message, no name in it. Ten Hag... I'm a fighter. Didn't Liz Trust say that just before she yeah, exited? Okay. Um, th there's a lot to talk about here this morning. And again, Manchester United fans, you, you must be fed up with me saying, why don't you give us a call? But honestly, on this one, after that last night, and well done to Newcastle United, they were magnificent. We will not uh, bypass the fact of how well they played. They played magnificently well. And Eddie certainly gets a tune out of these players. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.